All right, so today we're going to cover pipes. And I'm going to talk about all the buildcraft pipes. We're going to cover transport pipes, liquid pipes, and some conductive pipes. And before I get too much into this, because it's my second time recording this bit, um, wooden pipes are strictly interfaces between storage devices and your pipe system. And output pipes can all connect to chests, with the exception of the sandstone pipe that I'll get to later. Water, waterproof pipes are used to transport liquids, doesn't matter what the liquid is, if it's a liquid it can probably go through a waterproof pipe. And over there I have a conductive pipe demonstration and how to upgrade your conductive pipes into energy conduits. So enjoy! So as far as pipes go, these aren't the best pipes to use I feel, but they're very intuitive and they're a good learning point and they're pretty cheap to make. So. I'm just going to go through all of them, and they all follow the same general crafting idea. So here I have a wooden transport pipe, and you look at a wooden transport pipe, it's two pieces of wood and a piece of glass. And all transport pipes have this thing, so you can make redstone, uh, fancy ones with iron gears, wooden gears, more fancy, but special. But basically, material and glass. And so let's just get into what different pipes do. So your basic pipes are this wood pipe, this cobblestone, stone, iron, golden, and diamond pipe. And I have here a chest with some dirt in it, attached to a magmatic engine, with a wooden transport pipe, a golden transport pipe, and two stone pipes. So what's going to happen is if I turn this engine on, this engine powers this wooden pipe, this wooden pipe pulls materials out of my chest. I can watch them pop out. Because I'm using a magmatic engine, it pulls out a whole stack at once. It hits this gold pipe. This gold pipe, what it does is it speeds up materials. So notice the blocks are kind of going slower. They hit this, they speed up a little bit, and they go into the gold pipes. And then they hit this chest. And when this chest fills up, what happens to the excess dirt is it just starts flying off the space. So, the, these pipes here are basic. They're not very intelligent. Uh, it will just keep throwing pipes or throwing items at this chest until this chest runs out, which it has, so it's going to stop doing that. Now, if you want your items to go faster, you can actually add more gold pipes, so gold pipe stack. So if I now do this, you can see how much faster they're going. And so that's your basic, I want to get things from chest A to chest B. Uh, this wooden transport pipe is very special, so wooden transport pipes won't connect to themselves. They only connect to other transport pipes and to chests. Now we have the insertion pipe here. So this is a smarter thing, a smarter pipe. So I have this chest set up so that only has one free spot in it. So what's going to happen is these items are going to come flying out of here when I turn on this engine. And the very first item is going to hit this insertion transport pipe. This insertion transport pipe is going to say, well, there's a space in this chest. I'm going to send it over there. Notice that the magmatic engine goes there. If you were watching in the background, you'll see that that chest kind of flew into here. Uh, notice that the placement of items in here is not necessarily accurate. So these items and that chest did go into this chest. So the insertion pipe lets you not throw your items under the ground, it'll just divert them away from this chest. If I add multiple pieces here, it'll just randomly pick what direction and send it. So generally you want these to be some kind of gated option so that if they can't go here, they have to go there. Next we have pipe mixing, so different pipes can't mix and can't can mix. So I have here a very special pipe, a diamond pipe, and I put this here because I was going to do stuff with it, so let's do stuff. So what the diamond pipe does is you can program it to send certain items in certain directions, and that's exactly what we're going to do with it. So I want to go up white. I want to go forward red. And I'm sorry I didn't do this beforehand. 
So now when I turn this engine on, what I expect is that my dirt is going to be extracted by this wooden pipe. It's going to go into this diamond pipe, and it's going to go up into white. Whereas the dirt are going to go that way. And so the other th reason I showed this is I wanted to point out that pipes will fuse with themselves. So here I made a cobblestone ring because I put two pipes close together. Whereas cobblestone and stone pipes don't mix, so you can stack them and compact them nicely. And that's very important. And notice how all the stones going up here, all the dirt's going that way. So that's the um, power of these diamond p transport pipes. But they're very expensive, and there are other ways to do this using the red power mod. So we'll cover that in a later tutorial. But this is fairly straightforward. And with just these tips with the transport pipe, the diamond pipe, and the stone and cobblestone pipes, you can do a lot. Now we're going to talk about the sandstone pipe. So the sandstone pipe is meant to help you further compact things. So notice that the sandstone pipe can interact with the stone pipe and the cobblestone pipe. Whereas if I tried to mix these, the cobblestone and the stone can't go together. So this can serve as a bridge pipe, and a lot of pipes can do that. But what's really interesting is that it doesn't connect to chests. So your cobblestone pipe, your stone pipe will interact with the chest. The sandstone pipe won't. So this lets you bypass machines or chests that you don't want your pipes interacting with. And next we have the iron pipe. So here I have two chests. I'm going to turn them both on. And normally, when I didn't put anything in these chests, they're not going to work. But normally when you have a juncture, like where that iron pipe is, if you send too many items into it at once, it'll just randomly start picking directions. And the way the iron pipe works is this clear face dictates which direction items will go. So if I have two inputs here, this is the output. So now all my dirt's going to hit it. This guy goes straight forward, and these guys are going to turn right, which they are. Great. We're going to make it daylight. So that's iron pipes, good way of making unidirectional systems. Next we have the switch pipe. This pipe's pretty straightforward. I'm just going to turn this on. I swear in later chests I remembered to put items in them so that I didn't have to keep doing this. And so the switch pipe, it turns without red power. It looks like this. It's on. I can go in there. Notice that this is a two directional thing. So actually, there's a 50 50 chance that pipes will go or items will go that way and that way. And if I flip the switch, the switch pipe turns off, so now items can't go that way. Uh, one of them that was in the pipe when it got turned off went into my inventory, so be careful of that. And that switch pipes, they let you kind of modularize your system. They accept any redstone current. I used a lever here, but you can use um, redstone or probably red alloy wire. Next we have the distribution pipe, so I like this when I make farms. And so the way this pipe works, is you put it down, these are different colors, so it just randomly takes any item and says one goes this way, one goes this way, one goes this way. And I'm going to make it so that one goes to red, green, and yellow. Red, green, yellow are the bottom three. I'm going to turn that off. I have in here a whole bunch of seeds. I'm going to turn this on. Uh, you can couple this with Mine Factory Reloaded, the crop machines. So I would have crop machines here, I'd have a harvester down here picking up my seeds, and he would just send seeds to different machines. And so, as you can see, these guys are all going to stay even. 16, 16, 16. Blah, blah, blah. And that's a, an interesting way to freely distribute items among chests or, more reasonably, machines. We'll turn this off. Uh, these are magmatic engines, if you're curious. So they didn't have these in the last time I played Tech at Light, but they're really cool. You just put lava in them, and they work. Uh, they don't explode. They might break, so if they break, you have to smack them with a wrench. And if you apply redstone to it, they turn off. So next we have the redstone pipe. This one's pretty straightforward. And I did remember to put stuff in this chest. So when there's an item in the redstone transport pipe, it emits a redstone circuit. And here I'm using that redstone circuit to power this lamp. Next, we have closed pipe. And I just want to mention again that because this outputs a redstone circuit based on what's in the pipe, you can use this to monitor systems, you can use this to make systems that react to stimuli. 
Um, pretty cool stuff. So this is the closed transport pipe, and this is empty right now. So what this pipe does is, notice this chest is completely full. So rather than spew items out on the ground, they're going to build up inside this closed transport pipe, inside this buffer space. But the problem with this buffer space is that it's finite, so there's only nine here. And so once this buffer space fills up, what it's going to start to do is it's going to start to kick out this first item. And that item is completely destroyed. So be very careful if you decide to use these pipes, because they will just start destroying items if their inputs or outputs get full. Next we have the advanced wooden pipe. So before I've been using regular wooden pipes here, these things are not very intelligent. They'll pull everything out of the chest. The advanced wooden pipe is a little more intelligent than that. So here you can tell it what items to pull or not pull. So here I'm going to tell it these items are required. This chest has in it dirt, stone, gravel, and it's requiring dirt and stone. So it's going to pull out just the dirt and stone and leave the gravel. So dirt, 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 stone, 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 sorry. And then we skip down to the dirt. Now I'm going to tell it to exclude, so it's not going to pull those out. It's going to pull out everything but those. We turn it on, and it starts pulling gravel. So that's the advanced wooden transport pipe. Next we have the not quite as useful emerald transport pipe. So this is made out of emeralds. Um, just for the record, this is an emerald. These come from underneath extreme hill biomes, so I would not use emeralds to make an emerald transport pipe, but I would use them to make waterproof pipes, and when I get to waterproof pipes I'll tell you how to make those. So here, filter, it will only pull out dirt and stone. So again, I have this nice variety here. Um, if I put in some emerald ore in the front here, it'll just ignore them. And the interesting thing is it's going to pull them out one to one, so that's, that's worth mentioning in that this machine will pull them out in ratios. So if I put more in there, three, it'll pull out three stone, I think, per one dirt. So you can use this to achieve ratios that you otherwise wouldn't. And notice that now that I pulled out one to three, it stops. So it has its uses. I still would probably use a different method to sort my items like that, but whatever. This is the obsidian pipe, and this is a cool pipe. This is it right here, it's made out of obsidian. I'm going to power it with this, and the way this works is it just sucks up items off the ground. And I need to quick bind a button to my throw item button because I don't have one. F. I notice that because of how powerful the thing I'm using is, it can suck up from pretty far away. So those are now all in here, and this is, I mean, you can imagine uses for this. Maybe you're mining with explosives and you just want to pick everything up with an obsidian pipe, or maybe you want to use this in your workroom in case you have overflow from other pipes. That's kind of what I use mine for. Uh, the phase transport pipe, so this is a little more exciting. So let's just look at the setup. Chest into wooden transport pipe, into golden transport pipe for some speed. going to happen. It's going to get sucked in. It's going to go into this phase transport pipe. The phase transport pipe has two things worth mentioning. It has a send only mode and a send and receive mode. So send and receive can send items, can receive items. Very great. Send only can only send just an output. And then you can set it to public or private. So if you're on a multiplayer world, public means anyone on this frequency can use it. Private means only you on this frequency can use it. And then you can change the frequency. So I just leave mine at zero for the sake of this demonstration. And this receiver pipe is set to send and receive, same frequency. Notice it doesn't have an output. So this is the output. This is not an output. And I also have this chunk loader, so it's very important that if you're using these and you need them to be functioning when you're not around, that you use a chunk loader. Um, today I was playing with this guy, and he's really cool. So these laser beams show you your chunk. And this is actually a 3x3 trunk, so it's it's big. I'm going to turn that off so I don't see it anymore. And let's just see this in action. So, wood dirt comes out, hits the golden transport pipe, accelerate, accelerate, poof, bam, bam, and now it's in here. 
And so that's this. These work across dimensions, so you can use them in the nether, you can use them in the misgraph worlds to bring things back to the overworld. Very handy, very useful. Next you have the void pipe. So this pipe is strictly here to destroy things. So if I pump my dirt into this void pipe, the void pipe destroys them. It's a um, lower FPS way of killing things than using lava, but you still have the FPS problem of these pipes themselves, which as you can see these things moving through them. And that's all I have for transport pipes. So transport pipes are very great for moving items around or automating your inventory. Um, because we have the computer mod, this ME mod, over here, these ME controllers, ME things, these are actually probably the most effective way to manage your inventory, and I'll show you how to use those later. Next, I want to go over water pipes. So here we have a water pump pipe, which is a very cool pipe. If you put it over a source block, it will mine infinite water from that block. And the only thing really worth mentioning about waterproof pipes is that they're all made from regular pipes. So I want an iron waterproof pipe, I have to mix it with this pipe waterproof. And this pipe waterproof you get from a cactus. So you get cactus greens by cooking a cactus in a furnace. The other way you can do it, which is how I would recommend it, is to use the minium stone to just start crafting um, dyes into cactus greens. So I set up these switch waterproof pipes just to show you that the pipe behavior between transport and waterproof pipes doesn't change. So switch waterproof pipes just dictate how liquids can flow. Next I wanted to talk about the difference between emerald waterproof and wooden waterproof pipes. So emerald waterproof pipes can extract water a lot faster, and I set up a nice visual for this. So I turn both of these engines on and notice that this guy fills up a heck of a lot faster than this guy will. So we're looking here, we're looking here, this guy's already like halfway, he's hardly anywhere. And that's what emerald pipes do. If I made emerald pipes I would use them strictly for waterproof pipes to extract liquids. Next I just wanted to show you the difference in the speed between a golden waterproof pipe and a stone waterproof pipe. Golden pipes are really fast. That's their whole thing, that's your spiel. And so I'm going to turn these off, and next we're going to turn these on. So if we look, we can see gold takes the lead, and gold proceeds to murder the heck out of um, gold. So then down here, I have a phase waterproof pipe, and I have another void waterproof pipe. So this void waterproof pipe will destroy any water that comes into it. Not necessarily useful, not sure why you would use that, unless you had... um a refinery and you were getting sludge or something that you had to destroy. And the phased waterproof pipe I have sent over here. So phased waterproof pipe out into gold. Notice that the sandstone waterproof pipe will not interact with the tank, so I get some specificity in how I want to compact my system. And then I'm just dumping this into this tank. So that's waterproof pipes for you. Pretty straightforward. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention was conductive pipes. So here I have a magmatic engine, it has some lava in it, it's hooked up to a wooden conductive pipe and some golden conductive pipes. So this wooden conductive pipe is very important. So without this, nothing happens. Notice that I don't see any power flowing through here. Whereas if I replace this with a gold wooden conductive pipe, now I have power. This blue line is my power, and it's how much power I have. So these systems are already fully powered, because I planned today. And I just wanted to go over the alternative to this. So this wooden conductive pipe here actually bottlenecks the power of this magmatic engine. It produces more power than this pipe can transmit. So using wooden conductive pipes, you're going to lose a lot of power. And the way around that is with this fancy schmancy device called the magma crucible. And the magma crucible is made from nether bricks, so you have to go into the nether. You need this machine frame, which isn't that tough. And this redstone receptor. So you have to get the nether brick to make it. But what this thing does is it melts certain items. So it can make lava for you, it can make water for you, or more interestingly, it can make redstone, liquid redstone, or liquid ender. So we put some 
stuff in here. I'm not going to put that much in because this uses a lot of power. And notice that it's going, uh, it's doing something. And the reason it's not storing anything here is because I have my magma crucible with its output, this orange color here. So if I change it to something else, it'll store inside the magma crucible. Orange means that this right face here that you can't see is sending liquid out that way into this liquid transposer. And I have this liquid transposer set up so that it receives on this side. So I've gone through a beforehand and filled this transposer with some uh, liquid redstone. And Buildcraft uses MJs, which stand for Minecraft tools, I believe. And in order to store MJs, you need this liquid transposer. So this energy cell frame I um, made beforehand, but or cheated rather. It's made of hardened glass and electrum. So hardened glass, um, you use an induction smelter with pulverized obsidian and a lead ingot. So lead you can just find underground. And to pulverize things, you need this pulverizer. And I didn't actually realize I need the induction smelter for this. So the induction smelter, bam, similar setup as the um, the other thing, this magma crucible. The only catches is that it uses this invar blend. So in order to make invar, you need to mix iron and pulverized ferrous. And ferrous is not that easy to come across. So you can make it by pulverizing ferrous ore, which, you know, great if you have some. You can also get it by pulverizing iron. So I would, I would probably use a pulverizer over a macerator sometimes just to keep up my ferrous supply, but that's a personal choice. Uh, but we'll pretend I made this. And I'll just do, do, do. So the way these configuration colors over here work, I didn't mean to go to this part of the tutorial, but we'll just cover this quick. Is that this box has all these different colors on it, and you can make outputs so that it'll interface directly with buildcraft items. Please tell me this is off. So I'm just going to break the magma crucible so that it stops giving power to it. And we can focus on this induction smelter. So in order to make this hardened glass, you need this pulverized obsidian. And in order to get obsidian, you need a diamond pickaxe, or the equivalent, or a, um, a quarry. So we're just going to get this. We're going to shove some obsidian into our pulverizer. Our pulverizer is going to pulverize it. I'm going to give myself a lead ingot. Just because I can. Give myself a factorization one. So, um, that was my bad. This is a great example of why you should use iron pipes whenever you have a three way crossing. So, I'm going to give myself an iron transport pipe. Bam, 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 bam. Bam, I'm going to hook it up here, and then I'm going to set it to output into this chest. And I only got one obsidian back from that, I was expecting two. So I guess your obsidian return is lower than I thought it was. Now we're going to put these things into the induction smelter, and this will give us one hardened glass. And then that hardened glass will go up. Allegedly, there it is. There's two of them. And so I programmed this to just output its um, color-coded region to the top. You can also set these to input. So if something came into the top, it would go into this slot. It's kind of like how in IC2, industrial craft, certain faces do certain things. These are just customizable faces. So you get your hardened glass. You also need this fancy dandy electrum ingot. So you need electrum blend is made from pulverized or dusts. So you can get these from your macerator or you can get them from the pulverizer. And you mix them together in your crafting table, you get electrum, and then you cook the electrum to make your electrum ingot. 
And then that gives you this wonderful energy cell frame, which is the whole key thing to where to go. Dang it. Ah, it's working. Okay. So it's gonna fill this electric frame with liquid redstone. And that will make that. So this is an energy cell frame. And apparently it's full, which I was not expecting. And so these, I don't know why I can't place it there. I'll just... Ah. Okay, so then you combine this with more electrum, more lead, and that gives you the redstone energy cell. So the redstone energy cell is actually what I wanted. So this magical device is how you store Minecraft jewels. And it's the only one I know of off the top of my head that stores Minecraft jewels. And so this lets you save any extra energy you produce. And then the other thing I want to mention are these energy conduits. So I used these in another tutorial, and I wasn't sure how to make them at the time. Now I know. So you make these energy conduits, you plop them in here, and they come out this side. You get these, and now these are very cool. So these are smart. So I'm going to break off all of these, and I'm just going to put down a whole bunch of these. And so I want you to pay very, very close attention to this. So this blue spot right here dictates the way the energy is going, and that's an arrow pointing towards this machine. So I want this to point this way as an orange arrow, so that means this machine is now an input and it's providing power. So this machine's getting power, this machine's getting power, this machine's getting power, and this redstone conduit is getting power. And this system does not bottleneck. So these can carry enormous amounts of power. And what I actually do is I would have a setup like this. So I attach tons of magmatic engines. I fill them with lava using pipes from the nether. And then they send all of their power over to this guy. And then I have tons and tons and tons of redstone power. And then the only sad part is figuring out how to move power out of this device. So transport pipes, um, conductive transport pipes don't work so great because they get limited by the wooden conductive pipe. The energy tesseracts aren't compatible with the redstone energy conduit, so I haven't found a great way to transport large amounts of energy from this yet. But I'm still working on that. And that's it. So transport pipes let you set up systems for moving items around. They're very convenient with these, um, I don't even know what mod these are from. I assume they're from Buildcraft. These Buildcraft machines. Liquid pipes, great for moving water. Uh, you can also use them to move lava, which is what I would really use them for. And then there's um, oil and whatnot in the world that you can use. And I really hope I'm not mixing them up, my regular Tekkit and this Tekkit. There's also sewage, lots of liquids you can move. But this is really what you should use them for. So use your conductive system to power your machines. You can automate machine usage with these pipes. And these are cheap and early pipes. Later you'll want to upgrade these to the, um, the ME controlled devices with a computer storage and everything. But I have to do an episode on that because they just added that to Tekkit Light since I resumed making my tutorials. So, final words. These pipes are okay. They're really not the best pipes out there, but they're intuitive and they're very easy to use. So, good luck with that. Have fun in your world. <laughs>